Welcome to today's Rocker Demo. Today I'm going to show you some tricks and tools that make it easier than you might think to make a cutting board like this. It's a great project to use up scrap pieces and they make great gifts. It's made up of several small pieces or segments that create this geometric pattern and make it look like it would be complicated to make. Many people assume that to build it, you need to cut out each individual piece, then carefully glue them together, taking special care to line up each intersecting corner. The trick to making a cutting board like this is to not glue the individual pieces, but instead to create a repeating pattern. Then you can cut up those patterns and glue up the larger cutting board. One features walnut, walnut, maple, walnut, and maple, and you can see that pattern goes every other one, and then the second pattern is walnut, maple, walnut, maple, maple. And you can see how that one alternates with the first pattern. So let's get started. I'm gonna bring in the table saw. I'm starting with a three quarter inch piece of walnut and maple. Each is at least five inches wide and 26 inches long. Now these dimensions can vary depending on the thickness or how large or small you wanna make your cutting board. The first thing I need to do is rip these boards into seven eighths inch wide strips. Next, I glued up the strips into the patterns. I need two sets of each pattern. After the glue dried, I took them out of the clamps, cleaned up any excess dried glue on the surface, and now it's time to miter cut these into the segmented pieces. And I've got a couple tools that'll make these miter cuts a little bit easier. I've got the Rockler Precision Miter Gauge with fence, and I've also got a set of these Rockler Perfect Miter Setup Blocks. Each of these blocks feature three miter slots that correspond to the angles needed to create frames with four to 12 sides. You simply choose the number of sides of the frame or segmented bull blank, place the miter gauge bar in that slot, and set the miter fence. No need to use the scale or do math. Now you might be thinking, but you're not making a frame or segmented bull, Dan. And you're right. But the value of these blocks for this project is it makes it very quick and easy for me to set my miter gauge. In this case, we chose to use the seven-sided frame miter angle, which equates to 25.6 degrees, which is not the easiest angle to set without the setup blocks. I first miter cut the end of the board. Next, mark the length you want the segments to be. In this case, two and a half inches. Next, I align the mark with the blade and then I position the standoff block. Finally, I cut the segmented pieces. The standoff block sets the length of the cut, but it also keeps the pieces from binding between the blade and the fence. Okay, with all the segments cut, the next thing I did was rip the center stripe pieces, and then I like to lay everything out loosely to make sure that the pattern works, and I've got all my parts, and I can think through the glue sequence. The first step of that is gonna be to glue these segments together. Then we'll straight line rip the edges and then glue the rest of the board together. Now that the glue is dried on these segments, it's time to straight line the edge and cut off this zigzag part. I wasn't really comfortable with running this along the fence of the table saw, and I don't really like having lots of little loose pieces on the back side of the cut. So I took a piece of scrap quarter inch plywood, put some double stick tape on it, and I've stuck the piece on there. Now the plywood can run along the fence and the cutoff pieces will stick to the sled. Now that they're cut straight, they're ready to glue up with the center stripes. Once the glue is dried, I sanded everything smooth, and then I cut a back bevel on each end, which gives you a place to lift it up a little bit easier, and then I gave it a good coat of cutting board oil. So there you have it, a complicated looking cutting board that's not so complicated when you know a few tricks. And this technique of creating patterns and then mixing the patterns can be applied in an endless variety of ways with different species of woods to create all kinds of cool looking cutting boards. So I hope this inspires you to make your own creative cutting board. It's a great project for using up scraps. It's a great project for making multiples at the same time. And it makes a great gift. The kind of gift people will say, hey, where'd you get that? And you get the fun of saying, I made that. I'm Dan Carey from Rockler and Woodworkers Journal. Thanks for watching.